Now I want to look at another grammar issue, which is run-on sentences. Where we have looked at fragments. Fragments are where there's too little of something. Something is missing. Run-on sentences are kind of the opposite of that. Run-on sentences are where you have too much of something. So when we look at run-on sentences, uh, we want to define, OK, what is a run-on sentence? Um, and it's going to be two or more sentences. I should say complete sentences. <coughs> and then I use uh, a very grammatically sophisticated technical term, smashed together. Uh, without a proper connection. And the reason I use the technical term smashed together is one way to think about a run-on sentence is that it's like a train wreck, where one train has smashed into another train, and you can't really tell where the first train ends and the second train begins because they've been smashed together. And that's exactly what a run-on sentence does. It confuses the reader because the reader can't really tell where did this one end and that one begin. So one of the things to do if you've got a problem with run-on sentences is to uh, go and find your subjects and verbs um, and look and see, do you have something that has a subject and a complete verb and another subject and another complete verb, and if there are no dependent words, so these things are both complete sentences, then we want to look and see what's connecting them. That is where we want to find our run-on sentence. So if there is nothing at all between these two complete sentences, then we have a run-on sentence. If we have a comma between these two, that is still a run-on sentence. Uh, it's a special subspecies of run-on sentence known as a comma splice, but it is indeed a run-on sentence. So once you've looked and you've found your subjects and verbs, uh, if you find there's nothing in there or there's nothing but a comma, then what we have is a run-on sentence. So for example, I might have something like this. Wally never studies. Comma, he is failing all his classes. So we look at this thing. We see we have a complete verb here with its subject. We have a complete verb here, and the subject is he. So we have a complete sentence here. We have a complete sentence here. And right now, what's connecting these two complete sentences is just a comma. So that means we have a run-on sentence of the subspecies, comma, splice. So we want to look at how do we fix something like this. And because this is English, there's no one single right answer. Um, depending on what emphasis you want to have in your sentence, uh, things like that, you have several choices for fixing this thing. For example, uh, the easiest way to fix is probably to make separate sentences. So in this particular example here, where we have Wally never studies, he is fa failing all his classes, we could change that comma to a period, capitalize he, and now we have fixed the run-on sentence. It's now two separate sentences, so everything's fine and dandy. Another way to fix a run-on sentence, if you want these things to be connected, uh, because you want to show that their meaning is connected in some way, um, you can use a comma. 
comma by itself isn't strong enough to hold sentences together, but if you use uh, something to help the comma, and what we use are known by the acronym of fanboys. The technical term is coordinating conjunction. Uh, you don't have to memorize that term because you can just memorize this acronym, and this tells you what the fanboys are. So if we look at our acronym, we have for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. So those are the fanboys. And so if you want these sentences to be somehow more closely related to each other, um, then what you can do, we go back to what we had before. The comma by itself is not strong enough to hold the sentences together, but we can give the comma one of the fanboys to help it. And once you've given it a fanboy, um, you've got uh, not a run-on sentence anymore. So I'm going to say, Wally never studies, so he is failing all his classes. And that's another cute thing about the fanboys, or cool thing, or whatever. Even though these are little bitty, teeny tiny words, they do convey some important meaning for your reader. Uh, so it's important to pick the right fanboy when you're connecting things like this. Uh, don't always just use and. Uh, you can use something that shows more meaning. I used so, and what so does is it says this thing is causing that thing. And so we've given the reader some extra meaning, even though this is a teeny tiny little two-letter word. So those are very important words to use, the fanboys, uh, because you can really add some extra meaning even with just a little verb, or a little word, pardon me. Now, supposing you want these things to be connected and you don't want one of the fanboys getting in the way. Well, you can use a piece of punctuation that is stronger than a comma. Um, usually, it will be a semicolon. Which is this thing here. You'll see it's not just a comma, it's a comma plus this extra dot. So, while commas aren't strong enough to hold complete sentences together, semicolons are. Um, there are two other pieces of punctuation. You don't see them as often, but they also are strong enough to hold complete sentences together. So you may sometimes see a colon, which is this thing with two dots. Um, the colon uh, is not used all that often, but it's often used if the second sentence is some kind of a definition or explanation of the first sentence. Um, you may also occasionally see a dash. A dash is this horizontal line thing. Um, on the computer, when you're using the computer, if you type two minus signs in a row, the computer will turn those into a dash. A dash is strong enough to hold complete sentences together, but we don't want to use them too often. A dash is a dramatic pause. So if you really wanted to emphasize that second sentence, you could use a dash to show, uh, to emphasize that second sentence. So if we're going back to this example here, if we don't want this fanboy in the way, we want to use um, something stronger than the comma. And in this case, I'll just use the semicolon. While he never studies semicolon, he is failing all his classes. The semicolon being strong enough to hold two complete sentences together, uh, that's going to be a way to fix it. Now, there is one more way to fix a run-on sentence. And that is, if we go back to our original definition of a run-on sentence as being two or more complete sentences. What this means is, we can fix a run-on sentence by making one of them not complete anymore. So, you can make 
one of them into a fragment. This means you can do um, the same things in reverse that we looked at for fixing fragments. So where you can fix a fragment by replacing a missing subject or verb, uh, you can fix a run-on sentence by taking away a subject or verb. Or uh, if you fix a fragment by taking away a dependent word, you can fix a fragment by putting in a dependent word. So for example, uh, if I take away the subject in this sentence, then we can do uh, All right, let me. Wally never studies and is failing all his classes. Now, this second thing is not a complete sentence. We took the subject away from it. And so now we do have something that is not a run-on sentence anymore. Um, I did mention earlier, a comma by itself can't hold complete sentences together. Fanboys by themselves can't hold complete sentences together. but the two together can hold complete sentences. Now, once you don't have complete sentences, then you only need one or the other. You don't need both. So in this case, we have the fanboy, and we don't have uh, the comma because we don't need it. This is not a complete sentence. Now, I mentioned also using a dependent word. Uh, so if I want to fix this uh, by making something into a fragment by putting in a dependent word, uh, I might put in because. Because Wally never studies, he is failing all his classes. Now, this is not a complete sentence. It has the dependent word because in it. Now that this is not a complete sentence, the comma is strong enough to hold the things together, because they're not complete sentences anymore. So, as I've mentioned, there is no one single right answer when you are fixing run-on sentences. And I would recommend, if you do have run-on sentences, don't always fix them the same way. For example, if you always just simply make separate sentences, you end up with a whole bunch of tedious little short sentences that are boring for the reader to read and sometimes even annoying. If you've got a bunch of little short sentences, it's kind of like uh, writing with a teenager in the car who's learning to drive and you're going rrr, 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 and it's really annoying. So don't always use the same method. Some places make separate sentences. Other places uh, give the comma a fanboy to help. Uh, other places put a dependent word in. But mix it up a bit. Mix and match, whatever, um, so that you end up with a piece of paper that doesn't have any run-on sentences, and it's also interesting to read.